wish we could see the audience. I, I, I don't know why I'm feeling it tonight so strongly, but it would be nice to be in a room with a bunch of people there. And I keep waiting to see one of those shots like where a baseball will smack over a cardboard thing in the stadium or something. That would be kind of cool, one of those little fan things they built mm -hmm. up, some of, like the Mariners did that. I think okay. the rule here is if the ball hits you in a foul section, you, they send the ball to you. Okay, Dwayne, I think we have enough folks in to go ahead and get started. Okay. Good evening. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Dwayne Wilkins. I'm the head of the Science Fiction Fantasy University Bookstore. been doing that for uh, a while, if those of you know me. Tonight, we're really happy to host a chat with two of the newer Star Wars novels authors. We've got Justine Ireland, whose new book is called The Test of Courage, which is uh, her third middle reader, and it looks like a lot of fun. And we've got Charles Soule, who has been doing more things than I can rattle off in terms of comics over the years and Star Wars comics and Star Wars novels. We have Light of the Jedi, which I think is the first High Republic novel, and Kelly Knox, who's here to wrangle the whole thing. And that's it. Everyone, oh, of course, we have signed booklets for those who want to order more books, and let's take it from there. Hi, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, we have Charles and Justina. And to, to start off, just in case anybody doesn't know, I thought maybe Justina, if you could tell us a little about uh, what is the High Republic? <laughs> what is so, <laughs> the High Republic? Um, so the High Republic is the newest Star Wars storytelling initiative. Um, and it's pretty exciting because um, Charles and I, along with Kevin Scott, uh, Claudia Gray and Daniel Jose Older are crafting a whole new era of Star Wars. So when we say a whole new era of Star Wars, we mean um, mostly new characters, some familiar characters like Yoda uh, and uh, Yoda. Gary, uh, Yoda, whatever, <laughs> and like Gary L. Poof and some of the, like, you know, those older lived uh, species, but then also a lot of new characters and a lot of new storytelling. And I think that's really like the meat and potatoes of it is that um, this is really the kind of the first time in a really long time that we're getting a uh, brand new original Star Wars stories that are not necessarily tied to an existing piece of like movie or television media. One question that I see a lot is, uh, you know, Star Wars fans are a little bit obsessed with viewing order. So let's talk about mm -hmm. reading order. Uh, I'm gonna ask Charles, cause I think I know the answer, but what book would you recommend mm -hmm. to start with, <laughs> with well, a High Republic? You no, know, what a coincidence. Um, <laughs> I, we, we, we designed um, The High Republic to, to be a massive interconnected story. So, so every book has little references to the other books. You'll see characters popping up and all sorts of things. Um, and, and we also really took great pains to make sure that each piece, whether it's a comic or a middle grade novel, adult novel, everything is independent, can be read and enjoyed on its own. Mm -hmm. However, there is a narrative that we're building piece by piece by piece. And, and so the best order to read everything, if you really want the fullest experience that we've crafted is release order. And so you should probably start with Light of the Jedi and then A Test of Courage and then uh, Kevin Scott's High Republic number one comic from Marvel. Mm -hmm. And then I would move from there to um, either Into the Dark from Claudia Gray or High Republic Adventures from Daniel. Um, you can kind of read those whichever, whichever order strikes you. But then moving forward from there, just hit everything in release order and you won't be spoiled. You'll get the story sort of completely in order. Right, and just Light to, of the Jedi's first. Yes, Light of the Jedi's first. And just to make it clear, those last two books you mentioned aren't out yet. So you want to start with Light of the Jedi <laughs> and Test yeah, of Courage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait till February. <laughs> Won't be yes. long. Won't be long. Uh, so uh, if you could go ahead and maybe give a little summary of what Light of the Jedi is about. Absolutely. So so Light of the Jedi is a, is a big, sprawling Star Wars epic. It is designed to introduce readers to the era in the most bombastic and, and expansive way uh, you get a, a big cast of characters, many of whom are brand new Jedi who do lots of cool things. Um, you get a, a introduction, a strong introduction to the, the main antagonists of this era, a group called the Nile. Um, you learn about the, the Republic and what it's like at this time. And it's wonderful Chancellor Lena So and the spirit of optimism that pervades the galaxy. Um, you learn how all of the different Jedi have different approaches to the Force, can do all kinds of interesting things with the Force, have really interesting spaceships and vehicles that, that are connected to the Force. There's all this cool stuff that happens. And Light of the Jedi, it's one book, but it attempts to, you know, give you all of that picture in one 400-page novel. And I think it does, I think it does a decent job. Um, and, and it's really, you know, I really wanted to write a Star Wars movie as a novel, and, and that's what I set out to do, and I, I hope I did okay. It's really exciting. I, I have to say, just hearing you talk about it again, actually, I was like, maybe I should reread it because <laughs> I started to remember like everything that happens. Uh, so Light of the Jedi is concurrent uh, story-wise with uh, Test of Courage. Is that right, Justina? Of course, yeah. 
Um, and a test of courage is sort of the opposite of what Charles is saying. So while um, a lot of the Jedi is big and sprawling and you meet a bunch of characters, um, a test of courage, like a lot of great middle grade is a little more personal. You know, we're following these, these you know, four main characters and a droid mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of, you know, in their story, um, they're kind of on the other end of the events happening in Charles' story. So while Charles' story, you know, shows like, you know, the great disaster, which we've talked about probably ad nauseum. Um, it's a disaster <laughs> and it's great, it's bad. Um, and then it also, for Test of Courage, we're looking at more of like the fallout of that. Um, mm -hmm. we're, seeing, we're seeing what happens when, you know, you're on a ship and hyperspace is kind of shut down and, and kind of people are getting rerouted because of all the stuff that's happening in, in other sectors of the galaxy. Um, and then you have your own tragedy. So it's, it, it's, if you start with Light of Jedi and you get, you know, this big sprawling epic and you're like, woo, I'm worn out. It's okay. Cause we're in test of courage. We're just gonna, we're gonna have a good time. It's just, it's the, it's the Star Wars where you can like snuggle up with it under the covers and it's perfect. Cause this is winter time. So you want to <laughs> snuggle with a good book under the covers. That's true. You know, and, and also I should say like, it's, it's super good too, Justina. And like the, which, which hey. obviously is going to be, but, <laughs> but what I, you know, what I, I mean, like, it's, it's not just a book for like, you know, for middle grade readers. Like it is really something that can be enjoyed by any Star Wars fan of any age. Um, and we, you know, we, we again, really tried to make sure that every piece is enjoyable and every Star Wars fan can enjoy every piece and you don't have to read it all, but it is, um, it's pretty cool if you do. Yeah, I read it in one night. It was, it was like you said, it was really comforting and it was <laughs> uh, a really fun read no matter your age. Um, so I don't know if we, uh, if you're tired of talking about it yet, but could you talk, um, Charles, about the collaborative nature of this project? Because it's so different maybe than, uh, than people realize the, the five authors yeah, working together. Yeah, five of us. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the way, I don't think I'll ever be tired about talking about this. It was one of the <laughs> coolest things I've ever been involved with on a creative level, like period. Um, so so gosh, two, two years, two and a half years ago, uh, we were approached by Mike Siglain, who is a incredibly wonderful person and, and a high level executive in, in Lucasfilm Publishing. Mm -hmm. And so he had the idea to do this big interconnected story. Uh, he didn't know what it was gonna be yet. He didn't have the story, didn't have anything really other than, I think we should tell a massive story across all these different publishing lines. And he wanted to get multiple authors who he calls them fan favorite. He has a lot of ways of talking about us, but basically he picked <laughs> five people who in many ways, we could not be more different from another in terms of the way we write and the way we approach writing. But, uh, and even even like sort of as people, like we're, we're very different people, but that was genius because it meant that we brought very different things to the storytelling. And so like Daniel, for example, Daniel Jose Older is very focused on like sort of this, the, the burbling cauldron of character, right? Um, and, and Cav likes scary monsters and like just everybody sort of brings their own thing to it. Um, and so, so we then, he, we all got to go to Skywalker Ranch where the five of us sat down with story group, a bunch of Lucasfilm executives, uh, Mike, and, and, and in that magical, wonderful place, we started building what eventually became the High Republic. And we went there a second time. Um, I mean, the, the story of all the stuff we did there is kind of long, but it was uh, like amazing. I mean, just, you know, like, like right, crazy. Um, and then eventually uh, we, we started just sort of shaping the story, uh, you know, cut to a million Zoom calls and meetings, right. and, and e like a trillion <laughs> emails later, and here we are today. And, and this feels uh, like it's just wonderful, you know? Yeah. Well, Justina, you've written a Star Wars middle grade before, is that right? Yes, I've written two other Star Wars middle grades and then a host of other books that are not Star Wars. So other than this, this high level of collaboration, was did you approach the story in this uh, era any differently, do you think? Yeah, I think this, in this, so when usually when you're writing a Star Wars, story it's um it's a very specific kind of needle you have to thread because you always have um things kind of to the left and to the right of you so like um I'm a, I'm a veteran and when you're in the army especially when you get like an uh, orders right they're like go out and take the hill you need to know what's happening to the left and the right of you because so you don't like you know run over your buddies and so that's kind of like what writing Star Wars is usually like it's like I don't know who's over there, but I know what they're supposed to be doing. And I don't know who's over there either, but I know what they're supposed to be doing. So I'm going to try to tell a story that fulfills like my storytelling itch and kind of like connects to those other two stories that are on either side. In this case, 
I didn't have to wonder what other people were doing because I could reach out to Charles and Slack. I'm like, hey, uh, what's the deal with Lo- deal with Loden? Like, what, yeah. like, what's happening? Like, how like how does the book end for him? Um, even before he, well, even while he was still drafting. Um, and so that's kind of a nice, like a nice thing you don't usually get when you're writing, especially in IP or intellectual property. You usually don't get to talk to the other people who are writing with you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you do have like some collaborative stuff. I know Charles comes from comics, but like. Mm-hmm. Usually writing a book is a very solitary. It's like you and your Word document or whatever, if you're fancy and you Scribner. Um, mm-hmm. and <laughs> that was for Charles. <laughs> that was for Charles. But yeah, I feel like it's just you and the document and you're like just wrestling with it and trying to get through. In this case, if I'm stuck and I'm like, hey, I have this plot point that's not working out. I have four other amazing creators I can go to and say, hey, how would you, like, what are we doing with this? Like, have you thought about this? And then we get to have these great conversations about um, not just like Star Wars lore, but also about storytelling and craft as a whole. So it's just really been, um, it's also very stressful because, you know, obviously you don't want to like mess it up and you want to be just as good as the people to your left and your right. But it's actually been really fulfilling, especially as, as now as the, as the books are finally coming out to see um, people get to read the stuff we're doing and draw those connections the same way we did, you know, two years ago right. <laughs> a <laughs> lifetime of 87 right. years right uh yeah so it's, it's like it's kind of it's kind of been a really really neat experience you know th- just to like we talk to each other literally every single day which and I don't you know I talk to you guys like <laughs> like arguably more than many 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 people in my life which I did not expect to happen um when we first when we first started this thing, but we, you know, we do have the Slack channel. We, we talk on the phone a lot. There's a lot of texting and, and just, mm-hmm. and it's, and part of it, of course, is the, is the work, you know, we want to make sure that we're all very closely linked in terms of the choices we make, but also like, we kind of like just talk to each other all the time now, which I don't, it was, it was kind of unexpected, but I, it's been really good, especially in this period. Like, you know, when you're so disconnected from everybody, we have this group and it's, it's been a really cool thing. I'll let you guys drink. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so you both, uh, as part of this uh, timeline, you both share a bad guy in the Nile. Uh, Justina, could you talk about this uh, new group of baddies that we haven't seen before? Yeah, I mean, they don't show up very much in a test of courage. They're kind of just there to like mess things up as, as a good bad guy does. Um, but the Nile are sort of like these space pirates and everyone makes fun of me because I'm like, they're not nice pirates. But I really feel like the pirates of the Caribbean have given, given everyone a bad impression of pirates. Like pirates are going to show up and we're going to sing a song together and it's going to be fun. Um, and it's like, not these guys. More like, yeah, nothing good comes <laughs> up to hang out with pirates. Um, so yeah, so it's, they're, they're really a group of space pirates, but they have more going on on than just that and so what's nice about these stories is you go in and you're like the Nile are the bad guys they're space pirates and then you slowly start to peel back the onion and realize that there's more to it and I think to be honest Charles should really like discuss them because they have way more of a central role in Charles's book and um really the last third of that book is really about watching like the Nile come into their own I think Charles do you want to talk about the Nile sure. or yeah I, I I'm Yes. Uh, so, so the Nile, you know, they're a group of extremely self interested extremely savage. Like I would say the choices they make when they're fighting are like, we haven't really seen people do much of this in Star Wars before. And it's, you know, it's, it's sort of, I, I didn't, I kind of didn't realize it when I was writing it, but I've been, I should have, because I'm seeing the reaction. People are like, like, those are, those are some dark people. Um, and, and I guess, I guess they are, uh, they definitely, sort of take what they want. They don't care who they hurt or what they have to do to get it. Um, but they are very, you know, they're, they're, they're not, as you can imagine from a group like that, they're not like really friendly with anyone, including themselves. And so when the novel begins, they're, they're sort of split into three factions. They're organized around storm terminology. So that each faction is called the Tempest. And then there are ranks of, of below that of storms, clouds, and strikes. Um, and then above them, there are the three Tempest runners and then the Eye of the Nile, who's, who's sort of the main villain of our piece named Marky and Roe. And he, he's a very interesting character. He, he has a very interesting backstory. Um, and just, you know, when, when we built these characters, we always had in the back of our mind kind of the, the I'm going to say the specter of, of all the incredibly badass villains that Star Wars has had for decades. And so when you're making up a new central villain for a Star Wars story, you know, standing right at his shoulder is going to be Darth Vader and Palpatine and Darth Maul mm-hmm. and Kylo Ren and all of them. So um we we decided to sort of take a route that that sort of zigged instead of 
zagging. I don't know, like making Mark into somebody. <laughs> exactly, who, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, is is extremely scary, but in a way that we haven't really seen, and for reasons we haven't really seen. And and he's he's got a lot of story to tell, and I I am very excited to see where it all goes. So on the uh, the other side of that, or the flip side of that, is the Republic. This is the height of the Republic. It's shining golden age, and the uh, the motto of the Republic at this time is "We are all the Republic." Uh, mm -hmm. Charles, it's a question for you: Is can you talk about what that means for this time period of the galaxy? Sure, I, and and you know, again, this is all stuff that we all kind of came up with, so it's it's easy for anybody to answer anything. But um, basically, the idea now in this time is that the Republic is very optimistic and very. Um, you know, very settled. It's a peaceful time. And, and they have a chancellor named Lena So, who believes very firmly that the, the best way for problems to get solved in a big galactic conglomeration of worlds is for just people to see each other as people, no matter what they look like. Because if you see somebody as a person, you're much less likely to shoot them or take from them or, or really, you know, not be able to find compromise with them. And not everybody, not, you know, not everybody's going to see everything eye to eye. But if, it, if it's not always a zero sum game, then, then compromise can be found and that's good for everybody. And so that's where we are all the Republic comes from because it's like, I don't care if you're a Mon Calamari, I don't care if you're a, a, you know, a Bith, I don't care what you are, we're all part of the same shared enterprise. So that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. So this is, in case anybody who is watching doesn't know, this is a few hundred years before the Phantom Menace, is that right? Uh, Justina, I wanted to ask you if there was anything about this era in particular that excited you before you got started to kind of dive into and explore. I think it's really nice to see the Jedi being awesome and not like awesome and you're all about to go through a terrible genocide. Like, I think it's really nice to like know that this is like the, like the Jedi, like, I mean, even when we see the Jedi in episode one, they're already kind of like, at the end right you can feel it's coming like you can feel like the decline and like they make comments they're like oh like you know like the force used to be like more easier to access and those sorts of things and so like most of what we see above of the jedi are either they're in decline and things are going bad for them like every single step of the way or they're completely like exterminated and you have like the aftermath and you have like the handful of you know Jedi or non-Jedi who renounce their, you know, the order who are survivors. So it's really exciting to be able to write Jedi being Jedi, being the Jedi that we expect to see, being the Jedi that Luke Skywalker heard about from Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? Like it's really exciting to be able to write something where the threat to the Jedi is not like, you're not gonna be Jedi, right? At the end of this, the threat to the Jedi is there's other stuff that you have to go take care of. And um, maybe like you should do that. And that's kind of how they are in this, this. They're out and among the people. They are doing the things that you would expect a warrior monk to do, right? They're, they have temple outposts where they minister, you know, not really minister, but like kind of like help their local populace. They protect them from threats, make sure everything's running well. Um, and they're just like kind of like this source of like hope and light in the galaxy. And I think that's really exciting because especially right now, the real world is a little fraught. And so it's mm. nice to be able to like go to like the Jedi and it's like, well, everything is bad on the news, but at least I have Vernestra Rowe who I can go and hang out with or Porter Angle or, you know, any of the, uh, the Avar Chris, like you have all these like great Jedi and they're also different. Furiaga. That's the other thing that's great. <laughs> Furiaga. 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 That's the one. That's the one you want right now. He's basically yeah. a walking couch. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> Just snuggle with him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Boy. <laughs> but yeah, and I think that's exciting. I think it's exciting to, to get to read it. I mean, it's exciting for me because I don't like, you know, I'm not writing all the books. So I still also get to read it and enjoy it that way. So it's exciting time to be a fan. It's exciting time to be a creator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same question for you, Charles, because I know you're you're experienced in the kind of the original trilogy timeline, but this is a whole different experience for you, I would I would imagine. Yeah, I I liked. Um, I mean, my background before before writing was was law, and so I uh, I really enjoy I don't know systems and like all of the stuff that people hated about episode one. I kind of dug um, like the Senate and, and all the organizational stuff and the backdrop to to the galaxy. And so being able to, to create a lot of the systems and think about, okay, well, you know, we, I remember just, you know, we spent, you know, a, a couple of different calls talking about, like the five of us talking about, okay, what are the things that we're going to specifically use as signifiers for 
the the fact that this is 200 years earlier because Star Wars tech, you know, there are advances and things like that, but you like, do we still need to have hyperspace for example. So how do we look at hyperspace differently in this time? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that or how, you know, communications or just, we sort of broke down all of the ways that to signify that things were just a little bit different. And, you know, an example of that is like, there aren't three dimensional holograms in this time. It's two dimensional stuff, like it's projections. Um, you'll see different versions of, of things like that. Uh, you know, BACTA is another good example. BACTA is mm -hmm. not commonplace. Like one of the things that the High Republic is trying to do is figure out a way to, to sort of mass cultivate BACTA because I guess it's hard. And I mean, I don't guess it's hard. We chose to make it hard. We yeah. made it as <laughs> I guess it's hard. It is hard. It's hard. We did it. We made it difficult. Um, we ruined those poor BACTA farmers' lives. Um, but- uh, all die. No BACTA. You're yep, so. Yep. so, but- but that was an easy way to do it, right? I mean, it wasn't easy. It was inspired to think of it. We are yeah. brilliant. But, <laughs> but we, we were like, that's something that Star Wars fans are going to see that. They're going to be like, oh, okay, I get it. I know that thing. And this is clearly earlier. And so mm -hmm. maybe like, it's just more dangerous because wounds can't be healed magically by Bacta. And so there's a million choices that we made to, to underscore the, the fact that this is Star Wars, but earlier. And I thought, I mean, I loved that stuff. Like thinking through what the Jedi Council is like, what the, mm -hmm. you know, what the ships are like, what just all of it. It was a blast. Yeah, it's a blast to read. And, and even uh, I was watching A New Hope last night and uh, they went into hyperspace and I started thinking about hyperspace lanes and all the things that, mm -hmm. that you guys had talked about in your books. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm looking at it differently, like already. There mm -hmm. is, um, I did notice, and uh, trying to keep it as spoiler free as possible, in both books, there were some familiar last names that Star Wars fans might notice. Yep. I was, I don't know how well you can answer the question of, was that intentional for, for both of you? Yeah, I mean, I think almost everything's intentional until it's not. <laughs> and then right. we're gonna pretend oh, it's intentional and take credit, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, all along, I had yeah. it planned out. Yeah, I mean, and like, 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 keep in mind, like, this is still Star Wars, right? So we're still, even though we have a lot of creative latitude compared to like regular, into, like IP stuff, we're still working with story group and with mm -hmm. the editors who see all this stuff. And so, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, you have someone in there like, oh, this could be, this person could be related to that person or something like that. And I'm like, that's a great idea. Um, and so you, you can go along with it. So it's like, I mean, it's extremely collaborative in a way mm -hmm. that, um, I, honestly, I have never worked on anything so, so very collaborative as this. So yeah, so yeah, like for example, um, in uh, A Test of Courage, we have Avon, um, who is a little um, black girl on the cover with the curly hair, um, and her great descendant, we don't really name the relationship, is going to be Santa Saros, okay. who you'll recognize <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. from the comics. And so I think it's, it's nice to see like, oh, that nod, but at the same time, it's like, there's so much time between when you're going to see those characters and the mm -hmm. characters. So that it, you don't really necessarily know how those connections are going to flow yet. I think Charles has quite a few. Yeah, I, I do. But, I, but one of the things that's, that's fun about this is that we have such an enormous canvas on which to, you know, to work. And so like, if it was, if it was like one, one book and it was full of all these evidence, you'd be like, well, that's overkill. But the fact is we're dealing with like, a massive spread of the galaxy here. And so it's not unusual or, or, or it doesn't ring like, oh, they crammed a bunch of stuff in. It's like, well, that kind of makes sense. We're meeting a ton of people. Some of them would be connected to people we've seen. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, there's a bunch in, in Light of the Jedi, but the, the one that I had the most fun with um, is there is a clan of that has become extraordinarily wealthy from uh, hyperspace prospecting. Yep. which is which is basically trying to find new routes through hyperspace to get particularly from the inner worlds the core to the outer rim the, the unexplored stuff and so they this this group are they're basically explorers prospectors who found all these routes and sold them and did tolls and got really rich and so but their name the name of that clan is the santecas and in because in obviously force awakens you briefly until he's murdered meet lord santeca and he he is a he is a force explorer he's an ancient you know he's an old dude Max von Sydow, Sido, I don't that guy, um, mm -hmm. and he, he, um, he's 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 just introduced as an explorer who loves the Force and and sort of goes and finds things. And I always thought there was enormous possibility in that character as a younger mm -hmm. man. And and this is two hundred years before, so I can't go to him as a young person, but I can go to his family. And so the idea that his family would eventually generate somebody like Lor Santeca makes perfect sense to me. And um, those are the kind of things we're doing with the references. So we're not just putting in like, you know, 
Grando Calrissian because we want to have somebody who's kind of like Lando Calrissian. You know, we're, we're putting in people. <laughs> I'm gonna write that one down. Yeah. Grando Calrissian, he loves shoes. That's yeah, his yeah. Shoes. shoes are his mm-hmm. thing. <laughs> So, you know, we're putting in, we're putting in, we're trying to reverse engineer the universe. And, and if it makes sense to use an existing character and pull them back, we're doing it. But it's always thoughtful and it's never just for the punch. Right. No such thing as a coincidence in Star Wars, is, I guess is what you guys yeah. are saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, one uh, question I wanted to ask both of you, I guess, Justina, if you wouldn't mind tackling it first, is um, the Jedi that we see, each of them sees the Force differently. Uh, it's described sometimes as a song for, for Avar or a flame. If you were each a Jedi Knight, how do you think you would see the Force? <laughs> Take your time. I know that's a question. <laughs> um, you Mine know, would be the ocean, if that would help. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I, think I would see the, the Force as a blanket of stars because I'm, I'm a sappy nerd. And I, I love how when you look at the sky at night, you're like, is that a star or a satellite or a plane? And so like knowing when you're like, when you can pick out like a constellation for me, like that is so cool. Like I, I, I am just like, I, in fact, my, my husband's often like, why does it take you so long to walk the dog? Cause at some point the dog is gonna go off and sniff and I am just gonna be up there like that's Orion that's a big dipper and I don't remember which one that one is I'll google it when I get home and so like yeah so for me it would be like a quilt of stars finding the patterns within there and figuring out what the patterns mean so yeah that's kind of I think what mine would be um mine would be a a story um a story that that never ends and never begins and includes everybody else's story and uh it sort of tells itself and we all dip in and out of it as we live um and and every every living thing is part of it um, and, uh, yeah, a story. Very cool. Uh, so these are all the questions from me and we do have a few questions, uh, that people sent in, uh, through email for you guys. So the first one starts, uh, for Justina from Timothy. Uh, he says, uh, that he's noticed an upcoming book out of the shadows. It looks like it has three of the same main characters. Uh, is there a time jump between books or is there anything you can talk about with that book in particular? So that story, and I'm going to tell you something I'm probably not supposed to, that why takes place. I know Charles, <laughs> don't tell anybody. <laughs> It'll be our secret. Um, that story takes place after the next Del Rey novel, which is The Rising Storm by Kevin Scott. Mm-hmm. So there is not really a time jump. I think the confusion is is when people look at the cover, um, it's very clearly Vernestra Rowe, who is in A Test of Courage. And on the other side is Reef uh, Silas, who is going to be in Claudia Gray's upcoming Into the Dark. And then there's a girl in the middle. And everyone is like, is that Avon? Did she grow up? And it is not Avon. And there is more than one Black person in the galaxy. (laughs) And it's okay. Uh, But yeah, so I think a lot of people are like, wait, like, why is there, like, why is the art look so different? So I, so yeah, so like, when you look at the cover, that is a new character who I will not tell you who it is, because that book comes out in July, and in fact, I am currently very quickly revising it before, so it can go to copy edits and be ready for everyone in July. Um, so yeah, so I will not tell say anything more about that, but that is there, the gospel truth. Those are good hints, those are good hints. I, I do see in our chat here tonight, there's a little bit of surprise that there's more books coming. So maybe we should oh, take a step so back uh, yeah. <laughs> and explain but, what's coming up for the High Republic. <laughs> so, all right, so so the High Republic is is like gigantic. And and the the books that, that have come out this last week, yeah, last week are really just the start of, of literally a multi-year initiative with, with tons and tons of stories. And you know, there's there's adult novels coming. There are there's more middle grade. There's more young adult. There's more comics. There's like more of, of everything uh, that that will be coming out over the next like chunk of years. And and what's been announced is that the, there are three phases to this event. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one is called Light of the Jedi. Uh, the second is called Quest of the Jedi. And then the third phase, phase three, is Trials of the Jedi. And you know, that's all we've said about them so far. 
Uh, there's a lot of amazing stuff. We already, like, we know, Justine and I and Cav and, and Daniel and, and, and Claudia know what happens in them, which is kind of a cool thing. Mm -hmm. So we're not flying blind. We know what we're building to. It is very much a constructed narrative through the whole thing. And I cannot wait to see what people think of this ride when the ride is done. Um, because it's, it's, it's such a, like, it's crazy to think, like, this feels so good to have these books out. And I know, Justina, we've been talking about it on the Slack, how good yeah. it feels to have this in the world, be able to talk about this stuff. But it is really, like, just the, like, the first couple ticks up that first turn on the roller coaster. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's really, it's really exciting. So, yes, there are more books coming, more than you knew, you'll know it. You're going to need a whole new bookshelf. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just just to recap, so the first two that are out now are Light of the Jedi and Test of Courage. There's a, a kid's book that recaps Light of the Jedi called The J Great Jedi Rescue. Get that out. Mm -hmm. By Kevin Scott. That's the third book that's out now. And then there's the comic book from Marvel that also just came out. And so next we have coming up Into the Dark by Claudia Gray. I'm trying to remember everything. <laughs> we have Into you're, doing, the Dark. you're doing great. You're doing yeah, great. Yeah. So we have Into the Dark next. That's a YA book from Claudia Gray. I think that's February. And then the second comic book series from IDW by Daniel Jose Older. So that's the first, those are all part of the first phase of the High Republic. Is that right? That is the first part of the first phase of the High Republic. <laughs> okay. Um, it's the first so, wave. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the phase one has has more than one wave. <laughs> and and I think the projects that have been announced that I know of for sure are Kevin Scott's, Kevin Scott is writing the second Del Rey adult right. novel, which is called The Rising Storm. And then Justine is doing Out of the Shadows. And I know other things, but I am Daniel, not sure. Daniel oh, yeah, has yeah. the next, yeah, Dan, and Daniel Jose Older has the next middle grade. Um, we talked about yes. it when we did our high, and it's called Race to Crash Point Tower. Right. And that will be That's come out uh, concur currently with The Rising Storm. So and sort I, of how my book came out concurrently with Charles's book. Um, the next middle grade will come out concurrently with the Del Rey book. And there's and, a preview and, of that too. I, I remember seeing in the Test of Courage. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and through this time, the both the IDW High Republic Adventure series and the Marvel High Republic series will be going, um, sort of, you know, month by month. Every month you'll get another Monthly, issue yeah. of that. Um, and then you know, there's there's more after that. So it's it's uh it's pretty great. Yeah, Kevin's book that we're talking about now and Daniel's. A middle grade book those are both in the summer i believe is that right yeah. yes okay so that's in july uh yeah. and then i know there was also a, a manga title announced yes. christina i don't know how much you can talk about that real quick um about the fact that it's coming out yeah. okay. <laughs> that's about as much as i could share right now um and that i think is coming out the first week of june i okay. think is the the date right now for that so, so much star wars is yes, basically so that. much star wars <laughs> Okay, great. But you know, you know what's great about it? not to like jump in again, but which I guess it's kind of what I do. I'm going to do it. But I think this is do this, it. Go for it. This is something the folks the folks at home want to know. This is like how exciting does it feel to not have any idea where this is going to go? Oh, it's you know, best. like we don't, <laughs> we know, don't that, know who's going to die. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. we don't know. You know, yeah. I don't even think we know everybody who's going to die. We just <laughs> we know that a bunch of people will. A bunch of people will. Um, but like, die. you don't know who's gonna, who's gonna, if there's gonna be a chosen one, who's gonna turn out to be the central figure, what the bad guys are up to, like, what's, like, all you know is you're getting these incredibly awesome shots of Star Wars, and mm -hmm. they're not gonna stop, and, and as the story gets more and more interesting and more is revealed, it just, it's just gonna feel deeper and better, and you're gonna really explore this era in a way that has not, I, I don't think this has ever been done this way in Star Wars to this level, and it's really exciting to be part of it. Uh, so question number two comes from Karen and she says, uh, is the High Republic supposed to be a tragedy? I hear comparisons to Camelot with the chivalrous version of Jedi Knights in the Republic, but we know what happens to Camelot in the end. So, do, and we know that the great works of the High Republic don't last. So would you, would you call the High Republic a tragedy if you can talk about that yet? I saw this question in the email. I thought it was super uh -huh. interesting, but I don't uh -huh. want to, I just talked just, you know, so if you want to, you can, you can take it if you want. I mean, I think, I think all of life is a tragedy if you think about it, right? If you live long enough, the end of your story is you die. Like, <laughs> that's the end. Like, we all die. Sorry. Spoiler for everyone who didn't know. Um, but I think that, like, any civilization you look at, at some point, it's going to hit that point where it kind of falls and start, things start to unravel. So I don't necessarily think it's a tragedy. I think um, Star Wars has always been really great about giving us these moments of respite in the middle of it, like the storytelling, like even when things are like the worst, everything is very, very bad. 
there's always these really like moments of like just warmth and like comfort like if you think about the end of empire strikes back it's like luke's just had his hand cut off and but it's okay because he's back with with uh leia and han and, and chewie and on the on the falcon so it's like we get that oh okay everything's bad but it's okay because they can fix it and so i think in this case it's not bad it's not a tragedy but we do know where they end up and it's you know it's order 66 and the revenge of the sith and i think that can be depressing if you dwell on it too long except there's like centuries before that right, right. so like probably everyone who lives a human size lifespan is you know going to be good now our friends who are not is like Monk. so you know I, I would I would answer sort of in a similar way which is like but I'd focus on one part of it which is that it's hundreds of years before you know mm -hmm. like would you say that um let's see 200 years ago puts us around 1800 you know whatever like you know, the beginnings of America are a tragedy because Kennedy was assassinated. Like, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's, there's too much time in between these things to, right. to, to, to draw a direct connection between the events of the High Republic and, and the fact that centuries later, there was some bad stuff that went down. And, you know, like, I, I don't think that Yoda, for example, who lives 900 years, and we see his end in the, in the original trilogy, um, until he's, I mean, I guess it's not really his end, he pops up in, in the sequel trilogy, but the, what I'm getting at is that I think there will be complete, full, extremely satisfying story arcs, both on an individual character level and a like, you know, dynastic level, whatever you want to say within the High Republic, because it's so far before. And even though that time has a beginning, middle, and end, and and later there's another time with a beginning, middle, and end, doesn't mean that those two things are the same thing. And so I I would have, I would not call it a tragedy. I would call it two awesome stories set centuries apart you know like <laughs> right i don't i don't think the rev i mean i don't know i you get it i don't have to keep drawing examples from history you get the idea right i th i think maybe like justina was saying there's a very a hopeful tone to these beginning books in particular like if you look at the titles mm -hmm. it's light of the jedi and courage and that's kind of where you're starting yep. off is with a very hopeful tone with the high republic so i get you uh so a question for both or whoever wants to answer what was the hardest part of trying to walk the line of, of being recognizable as Star Wars, but also being something new and exciting? I, That's like, harder to answer than you think, honestly. Yeah. yeah. So like, I mean, one of the things that people always say, like, what's the hardest thing about writing Star Wars? And it's kind of, being able to capture the feeling of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those things like the old adage, I'll know it when I see it. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's the same way. It's like when you're writing even new Star Wars, you want it to feel fresh. You want it to feel like new storytelling, but you also want it to feel like Star Wars. And I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of storytelling that's been done in the galaxy far, far away. You know, like we have the expanded universe and legends and those sorts of things. And we have, you know, like video games and movies and like TV shows. So I think it's one of those things that you want it to feel fresh, but then you also have to recognize that some of the story beats you want to do have probably been done other places. And so you have to figure out a way to make them feel like they're their own unique storytelling beat. And you're not just like grando calrissian like, mm -hmm. like charles said earlier right yeah and so i think that's like the for me that was the hardest thing is like making sure that it the storytelling felt like star wars while also telling a new story that that was going to be engaging and it was going to welcome not just like the like the hardcore fans because we love you guys but like the hardcore fans like they are there but you know, what about that that fan who's like really likes Star Wars, but has been intimidated because there's like too many books and they don't know where to start and they like get a little overwhelmed. And so like, hey, you know, welcome them into the fandom as well. Because I just think like it's like one of the things I love about fandom is like there's just room for everyone and there's like so much stuff that you can like glom onto and like decide that you love. Um, I always make fun of Charles because he loves Palpatine, and I'm like, what? So I get like mm -hmm. he's the bad guy. Like why? <laughs> Right, but like we can have Palpatine stories, and we can also have like Ewok stories or Lando stories or whatever. And there's it's there's space for that. So that for me was just to make sure like when I was was crafting stories and characters, making sure there was enough like so like people who could find a different character they loved 
like, and everybody, you know, can get along. I, I would say, like, I mean, obviously, I agree with everything Justina said, like, it is really this kind of this, you know, tonal thing, but it's, it's funny, right? Because if you were to say, you know, Luke Skywalker went into a restaurant and ordered a cheeseburger, like, you're like, that's not that can't that doesn't happen in Star Wars, there's no way. But if you said, Luke sauntered into the cantina and, and, you know, ordered a Ronto patty, you'd be like, okay, all right, that's starting to feel a little more like Star Wars. But, and, and it's that, right? Except a million things like that, that you kind of have to know internally, <laughs> instinctively in order to be able to write this stuff, which is, which is kind of a weird thing. Um, so that's, that's part one of it. And then part two is that we had to do that for the High Republic, but also make it kind of new. And mm -hmm. so how do you find Ronto Patty in the cantina, but not say Ronto Patty in the cantina um, and, and, and not default to cheeseburger in the restaurant? Because for whatever reason, that doesn't sound like Star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like there are no buttons, there are no zippers in Star Wars. So you can't say, you know, Avar Chris unzipped her, her tunic, you know, like there's all <laughs> these strange things. Um, so, so, you know, what Avar Chris does, and she does at the beginning of Light of the Jedi, she unclasps the Jedi Order's insignia at the, the collar of her cape, and it, it falls to a, the floor in a silken puddle, you know, like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's, I, I think that figuring out the ways to, to be new in Star Wars while also being Star Wars was very, very challenging. Um, and we had a lot of, like, if there's anywhere where, like, you know, Story Group was, was a lot of help, but also, like, you know, there were a lot of discussions with, with how that was going to be done. Um, and so you think about all the craftsmanship that goes into a Star Wars movie with like the creature department and the props and like all of that meticulous detail in the model shop to like make everything look just right. We did all of that on like a word by word and concept by concept basis. And it was a real pain in the ass, pain in the patoot. But we- uh, They asked. <laughs> yes, okay, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I guess this is a university bookstore. So it's college kids. They've heard yeah. the word ass. They know about ass really in college. They know all the swears. <laughs> yes. So yeah, it was a real pain in the ass. But I think, you know, it's one of those things that when you've done it, when you climb the mountain and you can stand up and look and see the landscape spread before you, you're like, this was pretty worth it. And that's how it feels today. Yeah. Something I was wondering, uh, reading about your characters, we, we have Avar, Chris, and we have Bernestra. When you guys were doing the first like concept, did did one like Charles? Did you have Avar like was that your concept and Justina yours was Vernestra, and then you figured out how to to work them in together, or or did you guys start with like a pool of characters? So this is kind of like an interesting question because mm -hmm. we started with a pool of characters, and I think we were all just kind of like these are the characters we want to see, and these are like some other characters we'd like to see, like and then right, yeah, like, like not yeah. individual. Like, the types not like of a people. named character yeah. yeah but like types of people like who's our type a jedi who's the rule mm -hmm. follower who's going to like quote what the lore is to people and and who's you know who's our like our academic jedi who's the the person who's like they're not necessarily like stuck in the rules they know it all and so like we have like these archetypes but then the funny thing is is like it doesn't really matter how many characters you come up with the group because when you go away to write again it's just you and the computer screen and all of a sudden you realize you're like, oh, you know what? I need this kind of character in my story. So it's kind of, it's, it's a little bit of both. I can tell you like Vernestra Rowe like was, um, was a character that I did like put in the document because I did want, um, I did want that Doogie Howser Jedi who has to kind of grapple with right. that. Um, because I think it's just like, it's just like that coming of age thing where you're just like, I'm already in my career field and I'm 16 and you're like, great now what you do and it's like oh uh, and so like you know and like a lot of the other characters you know were the storytelling the story i wanted to tell like, okay who, who are the ensemble i need for the story mm -hmm. i think charles you i mean charles definitely like for if you want to talk about like bad guys charles is like martin rowe is all charles like charles was just like this is who <laughs> this is denial <laughs> this is martin rowe we're like yeah that's cool that's cool Mm -hmm. um but i think like i don't, I don't know like like buriaga that's yours too right yeah yeah buriaga avar elzar um porter uh, uh, like the chancellor mm -hmm. i mean the chancellor like it's funny because a lot of characters came from like concept designs so Ch yeah. and chancellor lena so is a great example because uh the incredible ian mckaig drew a like he drew a lot of really 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 incredibly neat um concept designs for us and for the high republic and one of them was this this picture of this regal woman with two kind of terrifying lion creatures that seem to be her, her pals or pets mm -hmm. or whatever they are. 
Um, and so we all kind of latched onto that and she, she became the chancellor sort of by default. Like we, I already knew that we were gonna have what I think at the time was called the good chancellor um, because we really mm -hmm. wanted to, to reflect good government now. So in the initial set of documents, it was the good chancellor and she was a, she was a lady. And I don't think we had her name right away but eventually it became Lena So. And then, and then we were flipping through stuff and I'm pretty sure Mike said, Mike Seglane was like, well, let's make her the chancellor. And so, mm -hmm. So that was all great and all made sense, but then we had to figure out who the hell the lions were. And um, Daniel actually figured that out. Uh, he named them um, Matari and Varu, and he came up with the name of their species, which I think is Tigons. And so- Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, and so that's a great example of a way that that a character who's very central to the whole initiative, she pops up in all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. um, came through the contributions of, of many, many people from a legendary Star Wars concept artist to Daniel to a little bit of me, you know, like it all kind of came together in this way that was really, really cool. And and so some characters are like that and some characters are just completely, you know, like Justina said, you go back and you sit and you type for a while and then there's Porter Angle, you know, whoever it might be. So it's, um, but it's joyful because this thing is so big as we've been saying that there's room for all those different approaches uh, and it's, uh, it's just, it's the best. We get to make up zillions of awesome people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mike from Long Island actually asked a question that, that one, made me think of that Mike one. Mike from Long Island. Good old Mike from Long Island. <laughs> I wants wonder to which know. Mike from Long Island actually <laughs> He wants to know uh, what other, we just talked about Avar and Vernestra. What are the other characters readers should keep an eye on as the stories continue? That, Mike from Long Island. That sounds like. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like. Okay, baby. Mike from Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> so, <cute. laughs> um, um, so what was the actual it was who should we who should well, we so what are the eye? characters yeah we talked about avar and Vern, renestra sorry. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um, um, certainly mark and row mark and row is a big yeah. one mm -hmm. and uh bell zedifer i think bell is I yes bell is yeah. awesome bell is really um, cool he's and got I, a big I, thing yeah um loden uh stellan geos um who barely pops up i think in uh in light of the jedi but he's around um who else who else who else who else well all of like daniel's crew is pretty great but i don't want to like i don't want to get into them yet because i want them to yeah. uh like to grow and live in their um in their They're, book uh geo oh, yeah. from uh from into the dark from yeah. Claudia's book is is pretty great um i think I, like, you should just assume you're gonna see everyone again like every yeah. every character that you see in one of our books they're gonna pop up again they're they're gonna you're gonna see them there's these are i mean and like Sometimes you might just see them to die. I'm just saying, you know, oh, yeah. people are gonna die. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of doom. It's a bit of a body count if you didn't get that from Light of the Jedi. <laughs> right. But like, you know, we 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 also it's fun because we're writing, we're far ahead, but we can also kind of we're we're excited to to see who we like as we're writing, and we're excited to see who we like in each other's work, and we're also very excited to see who the fans respond to. So like Buryaga has people dig Buryaga. People really like Skier. Yeah. Um, you know, and and you know, Vern with her her cool weapon that she has, which I'm not going to spoil on this. It's um, already been. Oh well, yeah, I guess it is a, a bit of a spoiler if you haven't read the book. I was like, it was like on a website somewhere. Like it was. It was. I think there's yeah. a picture, but that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a. Picture. But in any case, there's like there's a lot. Everybody's cool. You know, like who you like, we'll write more of them. Yeah. yeah. I was going to add the shout out for Skier because I, I had a chance to talk to Kevin uh, for StarWars.com and he mentioned that that character did come from Phil Noto's concept art. Yes. So like, yeah. you guys were talking about some of the concept art inspired your own creation, which I think is just, just the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so as we are uh, getting close to the end, Justina, we talked uh, a little bit about your next High Republic project is, is the manga. And Charles, you have uh, stories coming up for Star Wars Insider, is that right? Uh, yes. So, so Star Wars Insider is the, for anyone who doesn't know, is a very, very long running Star Wars fan magazine that, um, published by Lucasfilm, Disney, whatever. Um, but it's been around for, 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 for ages and ages and ages, decades. And so it is, it's kind of one of those places where when I was, you know, you know, a baby Star Wars fan, I would go and find it at the bookstore and, and flip through it and look at like, you know, they'd have a picture of, you know, here's what, here's what Obi-Wan's going to look like in episode one, whatever the thing might be. It was super cool. And for a long time, they ran serialized fiction. So like short pieces of short fiction that would be issue to issue, you would just get the next installment, like big cliffhangers and really exciting and, and all that. And they stopped doing it for a long, long time. And with the High Republic's debut, they brought it back, which is super great. And so I am doing the first two of those. Um, the first one's already out with issue 200. 
issue 201, which is out in a couple, like a month or two, I think, um, has my second story, which is called The Admiral's Request. I don't know if that's, well, now you know. My second story is called The Admiral's Request. The first one was called, um, the first one was called Go Together. Uh, and then after that, I believe Justina. Yeah, so Cav will have the next story and then mm -hmm. I will pick up. So Cav and I will be leapfrogging for the, for the, for the next story. So yeah. yeah. So, so that's a lot of monthly, right? Yes, uh, and I think, well, bi-monthly, monthly, I think. Is it quarterly? Bi -monthly? Monthly? I thought it was bi-monthly. We're really yeah. bad. At yeah. There's just a lot to track. Uh, there's a lot, yeah. That with the pandemic, time has become like a sponge. Like it's like mm -hmm. it's sometimes it, it's yes. wet and sometimes it's not. And it's always trickling. And like, you're just like, what's going on? Yeah, so uh, uh, someone, I think, I, in the, the chat. The chat it, just yeah. informed me that I, that we're getting all this information from the chat. So first of all, my <laughs> issues are actually number one, nine and nine and 200. Uh, so I screwed that up. And we're also finding out that it's actually nine issues per year, which is every six weeks, I guess. Let's just Unless say by, by every yeah. issue this year of Star Wars Insider to keep up with. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you should. Get them all. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I guess that's it for me. Uh, thank you guys for uh, your time tonight and your flexibility. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll go back to Dwayne with University Bookstore to finish up. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. It's fun. If Dwayne's around, if not, we can talk more. <laughs> <laughs> You're muted, Dwayne. Can't hear you, Dwayne. There you there are. We go. Go. Sorry. <laughs> the laptop and I are having a little fight. Sorry about that. What? Do we have a cat that's suddenly up here? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, we're on the East Coast, so it's like 10, and my animals are like, it is bedtime. What are you doing? <laughs> like, go to bed. Oh, it could be worse. It could be like they want you to get up in the morning. You had to stay up till 2 a.m. doing this. I know. I mean, we're not used to doing talks at six. We're pretty much used to doing them in the olden world at 7 p.m. And uh, that doesn't work that well when you're going all over the world or at least across the U.S. right now. So, yeah. uh, Charles, uh, Justina, I had a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the talk. I'm sorry we couldn't do it in person. I'm hoping we can both maybe meet up at, or all of us meet up at Emerald City this December if it actually goes off and we're actually uh, functioning at that point. Yeah, seriously. Uh, Kelly, uh, you should come in the store sometime and see me. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> like to thank all the folks who came and attended. Um, and I think we're pretty much done unless anybody else has anything they want to plug. Uh, we will be doing a talk tomorrow night with Django Wexler. Not Star Wars related, but a good author, nice guy, friend of mine. Uh, anybody got any last minute thing they want to throw out there? No? Uh, thank you for reading the High Republic books. This is really exciting. We're really thrilled to be part of it and really uh, you know, excited at the reception. It's been unbelievable how embraced these books have been. And it really makes us feel like, especially in like a tough, this time is, this time sucks. And so to have yeah. something that's like this, this good, uh, feels this good rather, um, and is this good, what the hell, is this good and feels this good is really nice. So thank you for people supporting it the way that they have. And for light and life. <laughs> yes, right. for light and life. We're all the Republic. We're all the Republic. All the Republic. Mm -hmm. Tell your friends to read it, come by the store and they can buy some more copies there. And I will, we'll hopefully have this whole thing up on our website sometime later. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night. Take care. Bye-bye.